Envied I can understand, but why are you pitied? Because I am blind, was the tranquil reply. I don't know much about Ernest Brahma, or Brahma, I think is how he's said to have been pronounced, except that he was really big in his day. He's one of those writers um, like Sax Roma and a few others who are just not quite as well known now. Rex Stout is another one, detective uh, um, fiction writers, some of them and adventurers, you know, uh, they wrote about you know, the bulldog drum and stories of Sapper, that sort of era. In fact, uh, Brahma was earlier um, than any of the, those others who've also been forgotten, uh, who are vast, sold in, in, in huge numbers. Edgar Wallace, I mean, my goodness, no one sold more than him. I don't think suppose he's in print anymore now. Same with Brahma. Uh, he and Conan Doyle were kind of side by side in the Strand magazine. Um, uh, Sherlock Holmes stories coming from Conan Doyle and, and Max Carrados stories coming from uh, Ernest Brahma. And they were sort of pretty much equal. It sounds extraordinary. Um, and now, well, Sherlock Holmes is, of course, the wonder of the world, and rightly so, whereas people probably don't know much about Max Carrados. So I hope these stories will change that, because there's something very alluring about the character of the man and about the nature of a blind detective there. I've given away his major property. <laughs> it, you know, there's an old phrase, crime is a disease, and detectives are doctors. And, that's that, that's partly what it is. We live in a, a world of increasing anxiety. It started in the 19th century, if you like, th with F Freud and, and others, this this sense of the, 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 the fragmented self and the First World War, of course, <coughs> which was at a time when Sherlock Holmes was still being written, uh, really shattered all the illusions of, of, of stately grandeur and permanence and tranquility that the Edwardian age might have suggested. Um, and so the need for detectives grew and grew because a detective sees a puzzle, sees an, a, an anxious puzzle, uh, uh, unhappiness and misery that is caused by a crime that it cannot be solved. Uh, and unlike the anxious puzzle of the real world that can never ever be solved, the detective finds a way of doing it. And we're so, we love them, we want to hug them, whether a little old lady knitting like Miss Marple or an egg-headed Belgian or the great Sherlock Holmes or the blind Max Carados. They help us feel that life is going to be okay. I always felt that my childhood asthma gave me a resonant voice because I learned to breathe from the stomach rather than the chest. I've never done any facial exercises or mouth exercises or voice exercises any more than I've done any other physical exercises in my life. But I think I've been, I once saw a treadmill. Uh, and uh, I, I know there are exercises people do, but it seems to me that uh, I'm just not that kind of person. In the same way that I never planned an essay at school. I just think it's so intimate. It's your relationship with the, the listener is so intimate. I, you know, I sometimes picture them in the bath uh, listening to the story or um, jogging on a treadmill um, or ironing. That's the beauty of the audiobook. You, you, you know, it's not true of television or... Uh, or indeed reading a book. What I think of is not actually telling a story around the fire in, in a cave with our ancestors so much as sitting on the bed of an intelligent child. Children are, they're splendid, but th th they don't always pay attention and they can easily drift off. So it's up to you as you read to them to keep them entertained at all times, to keep them spring, spring it along and make it exciting. Um, so, um, without uh, wishing to sound insulting to my audience, I tend to think of them as children, even if it's a very adult story. I like it to feel live. You have to think of the listener, I think, when you're doing a, an audiobook. Uh, the listener is all. I listen to audiobooks myself a lot. I think they're wonderful things. Um, and so I feel I know what it's like to be, you know, a customer. It's a wonderful thing. It's companionship and it's connection. There's a, there's a recording of The Great Gatsby, which is a book I read. I read it as a book a lot. Um, I read it at least twice a year. But I also listen to it. I'm, I'm, I know ha ha a lot of it off by heart. I love reading stories aloud. If, 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 I had, um, if I had my way, I think I would, I would do it more often. The trouble is my life takes me around the world traveling, doing things, and it just, I don't do, do, it, do it enough. I, I, I love to read. Um, I feel sometimes it's what I was put on this earth to do because I just find it so, so pleasurable.